anything the matter, madam? You look pale. Are you feeling unwell? No, I'm perfectly all right. I was standing on the lawn looking up to the house. I saw one of the shutters was open. I came to close it. I will close it. Why did you tell me the shutter was open? I closed it before I left the room. You opened it yourself. You wanted to see the room, didn't you? Didn't you? It's such a lovely room, isn't it? The loveliest room you've ever seen. That was her bed. I keep the golden coverlet on it always. It was her favorite. Here's her nightdress inside the case. This was the nightdress she was wearing before she died. Feel it. Hold it. Feel how light and soft it is. I haven't washed it since she wore it for the last time. I put it out like this every night. Dressing gown and slippers. Just as I put them out on the night. But she never came back. I did everything for her, you know. Everything. Here. Come here. These are her brushes. I used to brush her hair for her every evening. Come on, Danny, hair drill, she'd say. And I'd stand behind her by the stool here and brush away for 20 minutes at a time. And Mr. De Winter used to brush it for her when they were first married. I've come into this room time and time again and seen him in his shirt sleeves with the two brushes in his hand. Harder, Max, harder, she'd say, and they'd both laugh. We'd all laugh. He was always laughing and gay then. The rock spattered her to bits, you know. That beautiful face, battered to bits. Both arms gone. I shall always blame myself for the accident. Always. I'd gone into Kerith for the afternoon and stayed there late. Mrs. De Winter was in London, you see, and wasn't expected back. When I came in, they told me she'd already returned and gone down to the beach. I felt worried then. It was blowing from the southwest. She'd never have gone out if I'd been in. She always listened to me. All right, Danny, you old fusspot, she'd say. Mr. De Winter had been dining with Mr. Crawley down at his house. He told me not to worry. I expect she's spending the night at the cottage, he said. If I were you, I'd go to bed. I sat on my bed until half past five, and then I couldn't wait there any longer. I went down to the beach. The boat had gone. I knew. I knew what had happened. Straight away, I knew. Listen. Listen to the sea. That's why Mr. De Winter doesn't use these rooms anymore. He's not used these rooms since the night she was drowned. He hardly slept at all. He used to sit in an armchair all night long. And in the daytime, Frith would hear him in the library pacing up and down. Up and down. I come to this room and dust it myself every day. It's such a beautiful room. You wouldn't think, would you, she'd been gone away so long. you think she just slipped out for a little while and would be back in the evening. I feel her everywhere. You do too, don't you? Sometimes, when I walk along a corridor, I fancy I hear her just behind me, that quick, light footstep. And in the minstrel's gallery above the hall, I fancy I see her looking down, calling to the dogs. It's almost as if I catch the sound of her dress sweeping the stairs as she comes down to dinner. Do you think she can see us now? 
talking to one another. Do you think the dead come back and watch the living? I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I wonder if she comes back here to Manderley and watches you and Mr. De Winter together. <laughs>